welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Today we have Elena on the Make Life Fun Show, Elena Fernandez, and I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me and for everything that you're doing to help our listeners. Yes. Oh, that's, oh, you bring the joy. <laughs> so yes, please tell us about yourself. And you were telling me how you're a mom of four and I know how that is. I don't know how that is in my own body, but I know how that is because I just know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think that we all know because whether you have one child or many children, it's really the same experience of motherhood, right? We are nurturing a human being and ushering them through this crazy thing that we call life. So absolutely, I think that that's a beautiful thing. And why I do what I do is because as moms, we need a village, we need a community. And that's why I created the Positive Mom and the Positive Mom community. Because when we speak the mom language, sometimes other people cannot understand that. But we do know as moms what it takes to really be present with our children and the things that we go through on a daily basis and how hard it is and the struggle that we face every single day. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about being a positive mom, it's not about rainbows and butterflies. Yes, it is. It's magical. We have children in our home and they are magical. But the experience itself of being, having this sense of responsibility, having the pressures of the world, having the inner voices telling us what we should and must and could be doing, it really is an intense process. So I, I received that because, you know, having four children really is an exponential <laughs> work. And, and I'm a single mom, so there's a, a wow. lot more added onto that. And, and I think that as we unite as moms, you know, like listening to your podcast and, mm -hmm. and being in this show, it means that we're seeking and that we can actually find a support and a light and people like us that really understand so that we know that we're not alone. Mm -hmm. And this is what drives me, that we're not alone and that we've got this. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love all that you're saying because it's so true. We need that sense of community. We need to be united. And you're speaking of seeking because I think that is so powerful, even that word that seeking, because we'll find what we're seeking if we're willing yes. to look for it, right? Yes. <laughs> And so yeah. being, yeah, kudos to you, single mom of four, like, wow, <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, wow. Thank and the work you. that you're doing in this world too, positive moms is so amazing because it's not always easy to be positive. So I would like to start with that conversation. So how do we get to a place where it becomes easier to be positive? Because it's not always easy when we're in the chaos, when we're in the struggle of the day-to-day -day life. You know, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> because one thing that I've come to accept, you know, I've been through a lot of adversity. Mm -hmm. I was born to adversity and I am still in adversity. Mm -hmm. And it has been a very, very bumpy journey. And one thing that I have learned is that, no, we are not going to be in a life where everything is happy, everything is positive, everything is pleasant, everything is going steady, that ha that's called death. How do I know? I've been there. I was in a coma for eight days. And in that experience, you know, I was pronounced dead. I was looking at my body down there, laying, you know, in the hospital bed, 
and everybody around me. And it was the first time in my life where I didn't feel pain. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel pain in my body, but I also didn't feel pain in my soul. It was just a very calm, peaceful, beautiful, just, you know, everything that we seek for in this life. But I was dead and I was not breathing with my own lungs and my own, you know, I didn't have oxygen in my body. And so what I realized, because, you know, I had been through so much and I was just happy to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you, Josie, I just didn't want to come back to life. And I was told it's not your time. But I was like, but why? I don't want to go to all that turmoil and all that trauma and all of that just pain and chaos that my life has been. And so I understood in that moment, life is a combination. It's a, you know, I don't drink, but like a cocktail of emotions. And we feel them all and we experience them all and we must be open to them all. Mm. I chose to come back to life I chose that I chose the chaos I chose the craziness I chose the pain because it is part of our existence I always say pain is the common thread of humanity mm -hmm. now what did I learn I also learned that the positive what we call the positive muscle is it can be strengthened mm -hmm. when we overcome adversity and we make a choice sometimes it gets easier to bounce back from it mm -hmm. so after going through all of that, that I've been through and you know we, we may touch on some but we'd be here for a <laughs> long time touching about everything but it's all on my blog but when I going through one thing makes you kind of more resilient because you've been through something and then you know that you can get out of it now full transparency there are moments even going through all of that where I have judged myself and I had said you know you survived being just so sorely abused as a child you survived being kidnapped you survived all of these things why are you drowning yourself in worry about this tiny little mm -hmm. thing I used to be that person saying you know you shouldn't be sad about this. You shouldn't be angry about this. You should be over this thing. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I realized through both research in science, neuroscience and positive psychology, but also in my own community and with my own experience, it's not about that. It's about how you feel. As a matter of fact, I'll quote one of my mentors. His name is Gabor Mate. He says, trauma is not what happens to you. It's what happens inside of mm -hmm. you as a result of what happens to you. So all of the, the times we're going to find moments in which something seemingly small, as they call it, because I, I don't compare anymore, it's going to trigger us and send a response in our heart where we feel like life is over. And guess what? It's okay to feel that way. And do we have a choice? Sometimes we don't have a choice to continue or not feeling that way, but we have a choice to call on someone that will help us slowly and I would say compassionately get out of that. So that's what I've learned with mm -hmm. you know being positive. Sometimes I can do it on my own mm -hmm. because I'm managing my emotion. I'm leaning to my own pain. I'm allowing myself to feel all the things and reminding myself that I've got it. And sometimes I'm positive by choosing to say, no, 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 no. I'm in such a deep state of darkness that I need help from someone else to get through to this. And that is what a positive mom does. She knows the tools. She gets access to the tools. She gets access to the community, but then she uses those tools and then she acts, you know, calls on that community. Yeah. Oh my gosh. As you're speaking, my body is like full body chills. Like, wow. What a story. Like, wow. Huh. I just want to give you like, <laughs> through the oh, screen. I, <laughs> <laughs> Cause wow. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Because wow, what a journey that you have been. And you just shared with us just like a tidy little blimp. Like you said, if you were speaking about it, we would be here all day and then maybe tomorrow too. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, so I would love to unpack that a little bit. So I love that you're talking about positivity is like that resiliency of knowing that you have been through it and you could do it again. But what comes up for us is because we've been through this, we should get through this real quickly. And I, I'm going to raise my hand and say, I've said that to myself more times than I can count. And yeah. so I want to talk a little bit about that because I know that we're not alone in that, that topic of why we feel like we, we even though we remember we've been through it, why is it that we feel like we have to beat ourselves up so much? Like we beat up on ourselves more than anybody will ever beat up on us. Yes, I resonate with that. And it is the absolute truth. We are our own worst critics. And I'm going to say we are, but the, the right way of saying it is we can be. And so I will say this, you know, just like pain and life are so interconnected, I will say that there are different parts of us. And this is, you know, where we need to lean into. It's like, Right now, we may say, you and I, well, one part of me is really excited that we're talking here. Another part of me is nervous, you know, if I'm saying the right thing. Another part of, of me is worried about X, Y, Z. So we have different parts of us. And so, yes, one of the parts of us is really critical and mm -hmm. demeaning and snarky mm -hmm. and just telling us the things that it's telling us. And yet that part of us that many call the inner critic or the inner bully, I usually call it the inner villain because I'm a very fairy tale <laughs> type of person. And so that part of us wants to protect us. And the information that it provides can be valuable depending on how we receive it. Mm -hmm. And so it's, is it telling us, hey, you should be over this. I mean, you don't have time to be depressed. I've heard of that so many times. You don't have time to be depressed. You've got to, you know, do X, Y, C. And it's protecting us. It's telling us the things that we need to hear in a way so that we snap out of it. But it's not a compassionate part of us. So we don't want to internalize. We want to take that information and see, is there truth in this? Well, yes, you know. Maybe I need to take a few breaths and calm down and do this thing, like show up for life. And where can I schedule a time for my recovery? Because this emotional pain that I have is really real. So not to invalidate ourselves, but, you know, to be cognizant that our inner child, we got to parent it. So when you tell your child, you know, this is church. We don't get naked here. We get naked in the pool <laughs> or, you know, in yes, our bathing yes. suit or whatever. We're finding out appropriate ways and appropriate times to really bring that out while honoring our emotions. Mm -hmm. So allowing ourselves to sob, allowing ourselves to still be angry, still not forgiving, still getting teary, still quivering about something and, and just understanding that that's part of our journey and that there is no real timeline for grieving and for feeling. Mm -hmm. And there are things in my life that I probably will never get over mm -hmm. and that are still going to come up and are still going to be like a, you know, perceived disability for other people. Maybe they think I'm too sensitive. Maybe they think, you know, it's not a big deal mm -hmm. or whatever it is that they think, but I am not responsible for them yeah. or what they think. I'm responsible for me mm -hmm. and I need to honor that. And that is my invitation for everyone who's listening. You know, you're going to get information saying this and that, and you have a choice to discern that. Because that part of your brain only wants to keep you safe. And that's why it's fear-based. Mm -hmm. And then there's another part of you that's love-based, mm -hmm. right? And that part of you is going to tell you to go for it, to embrace yourself and that you're beautiful and, and remind you of the true essence of who you are. And why am I saying this? Well, it's science, but also 
I could see that when I was in my coma. Mm -hmm. I could see that there was a physical part of me and a mental part of me, but there also was a soul part of me that's bigger than everything in this existence. And so that when we tune into the real essence of who we are, we understand that there is no, really no end and no limit to what we can do and who we can be. And we decide that on our own terms. Beautifully said, like as you were speaking, you were painting the picture and you were painting it so beautifully. So yeah, I'm just going to let that one be and we're going to keep going because that was gorgeously said. So thank you. And I would love for you to speak on the part of your trauma that you feel called to speak on today that got you because you were talking about your coma that got you these like big revelations, big like ah ahas that were like to the depth of your soul. And I'm so appreciative that you're sharing that with us, but these, our stories have so much to teach us. And I would love for you to touch on your story because it matters. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to share that because, you know, for many years, 20 to be exact, I was really ashamed of saying what happened to me. And even though when part of me knew that it was not my fault, I had internalized a lot of the stigma and shame and stereotypes that come with trauma. In some way, I felt that I was broken. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized I needed to write my story. I needed to really get it out of me. And that's one tool that I'm going to share with everybody is, you know, it doesn't belong in you. You know, just like when you eat something that doesn't resonate with your system and it, it's a, you get a stomach ache, most of the pain that we don't, we haven't processed it is there really making us sick and not just physically, but emotionally and in our spirit. The main problem with that as moms, how it's so relevant more, you know, and why I'm so passionate and I'm speaking to moms is that I experience in my childhood, that when you don't process your pain as a mom, you transmit your pain. And so you pass it on. And so that's why my biggest passion is to break cycles. And this happens when we transform our trauma, then we stop transmitting it. And so I realized that in order for me to take it up a notch and to really be a present and playful and you know, peaceful mom, I needed to get all of this out of my system. So it took me eight months. And every day I set aside two to five minutes to write down something that I remembered from this experience. It was so hard. It was excruciating pain because for many, you know, for much time, I wanted to bury it. Like it never happened and never talk about it and never do anything like that because it was painful. You know, I was going to school and I, you know, I grew up in a slum. So I was from very, very extreme. I grew up in extreme poverty, but I learned English. And so I had the opportunity to go to college and to, you know, get a paying job and it just, it changed my life. And so I went to get public transportation. I was going to college. I lived in the city all on my own. I boarded this transportation car, not knowing that I was going to end up in a, in an unknown destination, in a remote destination. I had very little experience riding cars. I mean, you know, it was something that I didn't grow up around. And so he managed to trap me in the car, this driver, right? It was horrific. I mean, he assaulted me in every possible way that you can assault a human being. And the words and the actions of this assault were just terrifying. I don't wish them on any human being, and especially a young girl like I was, a teenager. You know, I was 19, but I really look 13. I'm really short (laughs) or fun-sized. I mean, this is the making life fun and I'm fun-sized. It took all of me, and I tell this vividly in my blog, this story. It's called the story I wish, you know, I I never wanted to tell. I escaped this car, naked, bloody, and it was just really a moment of in time in which I was just so strong for myself. I can't even 
describe it, Josie, because the strength that came from me, I was here, you know, having received all of this violence and violation, I was able to escape and walk through this path into a gas station. And it was just just something that y- you only see in movies, I thought. And I, I hadn't even seen a movie like that. And I wish I could tell you that that was the hardest thing that I experienced. But I was strong for myself and I wanted to survive. I felt I'm alive, you know, everything is going to work out. And then he was caught. And then I had to re-experience this in a trial. And then I was invalidated. And then I was shamed. And then I was blamed. And then, and then, and then. Every single day I wanted to die, Josie. And the reason I like to share this story now that I buried for so long is number one, when I shared it with my readers, the outpouring of love that I received was incredible for me, but the incredible healing that happened in them and the people that came forward, mostly moms, but also non-moms and also men that came forward telling me their stories. I mean, you're talking about chills and it's just, it was a sacred time for me and it made it all worth it. It took me eight eight months to write it. Usually it takes me half an hour to write Mm -hmm. 3000 words. And it took me, you know, a few more months to actually publish it. Mm -hmm. And yet I figured out, you know, the world needs to hear our pain. What I got from this was this. People kept telling me, wow, it's a miracle. You know, you survived. The pregnancy test was negative. He's going to pay for his crime. You should be very grateful. And I did not feel very grateful. I felt angry. I felt hopeless. I felt, you know, just like there was something wrong with me that I had always being abused and I had always been mistreated and it wasn't until because the accident that led me to the coma happened six months after this it was you know I experienced all of this in a year when most people go a lifetime and don't experience these things and and what I realized Josie is that I think that we yeah we mean well when we want to encourage other people. And being positive doesn't mean this silver lining and this false encouragement, is this invalidation. We must be present with people's pain. And so the reason I'm sharing my story and I like now to share my story, it's difficult and, and you can see how awkward it is because it's hard. It's my body remembers all these things and it and my mind is connecting those emotions with it. And and for the longest time I couldn't even get a word out when I was sharing it. And yet it is worth it because we need to learn how to be in the presence of other people's pain and not motivate them. I call it motivational guilt and motivational invalidation and motivational shame. I shouldn't have been grateful. I had been through the most horrific experience that a girl can experience, that a human can experience. And so let's be present with people's pain. And how, what does that look like? When I get, went to the gas station, there was a woman there. Well, there was a couple there in, in a fancy car. And she got out of her fancy car with her fancy clothes. You know, it was like I was seeing someone from a Hollywood movie like an Elizabeth Taylor or, a, you know, Audrey Hepburn. And she had pearls and she looked so fancy. And she just hugged me. And she just grabbed her partner, husband, brother. I don't know who it was. She grabbed his jacket and his fancy jacket just enveloped me in my nakedness, in my blood. And she just held me. She did not tell me that everything happens for a reason. She just loved me. She just saw me. And, you know, I had pieces of my hair, my scalp that were, that were gone. And she, I could feel her hand touching me. And I could feel the pearls. And I could feel her chest. And it was the most motherly moment that I had ever experienced. And I needed it so much. And when I think about how I kept alive 
for those six months before I actually died, <laughs> which is crazy. It was her love. It was her love. And I don't know her name. And I hope one day I'll do. I will. But uh, it was that presence. That is what people need when they're in pain. They need your presence. They need to know you're there with them. They need to know you feel their pain. They need to know that your messiness is okay with them, that they get dirty with it, that they get, you know, infected with it, that it passes on because it's real. And that is my message. And was I grateful that he raped me and kidnapped me and hit me with a baseball bat? No, I will never be grateful for that. I, that's not being positive. That's just being, I don't know, but it's not what we're meant to be. But you know who I'm grateful for? I'm grateful for me. I'm grateful that in the midst of his distraction, I figure out how to get out of that car. That in the midst of my weakness, I figure out how to walk away from him. That I figured out I had the courage to ask for help. And I kept thinking, Josie, I'm naked, like people are going to see me and, you know, what are they going to think? I, I had that going. I had that same tape we all have going. Like now I'm not a virgin and I'm probably damaged goods, which is what I was told, you know, growing up. So I, I went through all of this and yet I still managed to get out. I'm grateful for me. I'm grateful for her. I'm not grateful that it happened and I'm not stronger for it. I'm stronger because of my courage. I'm stronger because of her love. Wow. I see you. I see you too. <laughs> oh, wow. Just pure magic. Pure magic. You. Pure and magic. You. And you. <laughs> that is what's on my heart. Pure magic. And I love that you're speaking to the courage that you have and how you are appreciative of that because that's not what we hear. No. When we go through the trauma, when we go through the pain, we hear that it should make us stronger. And so we take on that narrative and we say it, we say, yes, it made me stronger. I've said it. I continue to say it, but do I believe it? And the way you put it is so brilliant. It's so affirming. It's so loving. Thank you. Like it's so needed that message that you just, you just were able to share with us. That message is so needed and it it's going to touch so many hearts. Like my heart is overflowing. Thank you. And, and I'm doing it to model because we all need to do it. We all need to go into those things that are painful, that we overcame mm -hmm. and thank, you know, 19 year old self or 12 year old self or however old you were and say, Elena, Josie, thank you. It was you. It was your strength. It was your courage. It was your ability to be unapologetically yourself. It was your effort, whatever that was. And thank that younger self, even if it was yesterday, Elena yesterday. But we need to acknowledge ourselves, not acknowledge the circumstance or the perpetrator or the abuser, whoever was part of that. They're not responsible for your magic, like you said. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for your magic. That message right there, please hear it loud and clear. Let it seep in because that is not the message that we're told. We're not told to look at ourselves. We're told to look at what happened to us and how all the words you were saying, how it's supposed to happen for a reason, make us stronger. And those until you're speaking right now, I've never thought of how volatile and how awful those yeah. words are and how damaging really, truly. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's why we transmit it because, you know, I don't know if you have heard it, but I've heard like, oh, that happened to you and you turned out okay. Yeah. It was yesterday. And yeah. Yeah. You turned out okay. So it's okay to continue to do it. You know, whatever it is, it's okay to continue to say that because you're okay you you know and by being okay what they mean is you look like they want you to look on the outside okay that's what that means it doesn't mean inside of you because you know whoever says that they're not interested to know 
of the struggles that you go in your private time mm -hmm. or or with your safe person because that's yeah. definitely not your safe person yeah and so the fact that we functioning in society doesn't mean that we are okay yeah it just means that we have decided to either numb or dismiss and carry through so that we conform and that we fit this box. Mm -hmm. But many of us who are functioning, and I, I am an expert at functioning when I am just hoping to die. And we are functioning and we look the part and you know we get our check marks, you know, our, our boxes checked, and yet we are suffering. It's our responsibility to call things what they are. And to go and see ourselves as the courageous, beautiful, amazing humans that we are, where our essence is love, and to unapologetically do that for our children. Because if we continue to say that it's okay to experience trauma, then it's going to continue to happen. That's the part. And that's the part. That is the message that with that self-acceptance piece and being with it and holding it and honoring it, the healing it and finding that well-being, that is what we pass on to our children. And that is why it's so powerful and so magical that I think moms, if we tell them they're doing it for their children, yeah, that, automatically you're like, yeah. okay, sign me up. Yeah, that's how I signed up because I had no sense of worth to think that I even deserved any type of self-compassion or self-care you know or time alone for myself what <laughs> that was never modeled to me and yet I never it never occurred to me well that's why you're suffering you know and this is why it's so crucial for us as moms to to get our emotions in check but something that I want to say that just clicked for me in like within the last few days is that when I was given the choice to continue this trial and there were many people that were like, you know, telling me how I was responsible because this man happened to be actually not a, you know, hardworking car driver. It's like a public car, public transportation car. He happened to be a politician who posed as a car driver. So you can imagine the mess that I was in. And so they said to me, they sat me down, you know, eye to eye and said to me, you have the opportunity to lock him up forever. And if you don't do that, he's going to continue to do it to other women. And so now I had to be the hero for everyone. And, you know, there was no option for me to, to even consider anything else. And yet I was so courageous. And I said, no, you do that on your own. You're going to figure out how to do that without me. And I thought about that and I was just in so many, oh my gosh, I, I was in tears, Josie. And it never clicked to me like you took care of yourself. And I knew that, you know, there, I didn't even know anything about mental health. This was 1996 in the Dominican Republic, you know? And now I think about it and it's the perfect analogy for our listeners because we are only responsible for our own well-being. And yes, we want to break cycles. Yes, we want to model for others. Yes, what we do impacts other people. But unless we actually heal it from the inside out, we're doing nothing. <laughs> we, you know, we are just simply saying words that may or may not land. But when we model for our children what it's like to go for your dreams, to set your own boundaries, to take time away from them to do your own healing. That's the real talk. That's really what has changed my daughter's lives. And as I continue to heal and to, you know, be in community and to be honest about that, there are age appropriate ways in which we share it with our kids. But to be honest with that, that's the real way to break those cycles. It's not our responsibility. It is not our fault, but it is our privilege as we heal. Privilege. Your words are magical. <laughs> I just like, yes, it is our privilege. 
to do that. It is our right to write that story the way it feels it needs to be felt for us. Yeah. And taking that yeah. responsibility, taking, I just keep seeing that pin, like taking that pin back, writing yeah. your story yeah, and letting yourself feel it all. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you know. something that, you know, in my research, I have found this technique called psychological distance. Mm -hmm. And I love it because it helped me, you know, and I, and I recently published a poetry book mm -hmm. and it's a very dark poetry book because it, it was taking my pain and turning it into poetry. And it, it's also a self-help book, but, but the reason I'm sharing that with you is because when we write or speak in the third person, we are able to be wise observer of our story. And that is the way to gain psychological distance and to, to feel the pain, but also learn from the pain and absorb what the pain has there to teach you. And it could be in the second person too. It could be, you know, talking to yourself like, Elena, you're courageous. When I say I am courageous, I know that a lot of people, you know, believe in affirmations and they do help. But when you say your name and you talk to yourself out loud, you know, when I, grow, when I was growing up and somebody was walking, talking to themselves, they say, oh, here goes the crazy person. And actually, science shows that that is a great way to process your emotions. Mm -hmm. And when you write your story, when you write it down, it's even more powerful, of course, if you have the, the space. And that's why I think it, it should be something that, that I am always practicing. But when you write your story in the second person or the third person, or turn it into a song or turn it into poetry or do, you know, use a drawing and you basically transform that pain into a self-expression. It is so powerful. Mm -hmm. and You are able to get out of that dark moment so much quickly, but also have appreciation for who you are and why you're feeling it. Not invalidated, like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling like I want to, you know, I don't know, disappear right now, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to say I'm courageous mm -hmm. and then it's going to go away. No, you got to process it. And there's a neuroanatomist. Her name is Jill Bolte Taylor. And I think it's whole living with a whole brain. I think that's the name of, of her book. But she says in that book that any emotion, it only lasts 90 seconds. It's called the 90 second rule. So any more than that, we're actually choosing to stay. Mm -hmm. So we are always afraid of our unpleasant, you know, painful emotions, but really they're, they're not going to take over unless we let them, you know? And so it's, it's healthy to get in touch with that as it was healthy for me to write that story. And when we write it and we really get it out, it's no longer in us, but when we write it in the third person, then it actually comes back to us with wisdom mm -hmm. with messages that we can share with others yeah that is exactly what you're doing so thank you Aww. for what you do thank you thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you. <laughs> so please tell our listeners where they can get on your blog where they can connect with you how they can support you and be a part of your world basically because you are so full of wisdom and the words that you speak are healing oh thank you <laughs> I appreciate that, Josie. I, my blog is thepositivemom.com. That's where you can read all my stories and get on all of my soapboxes. <laughs> and also they can join my free community. It's community.thepositivemom.com. And I'm on social media everywhere. So if you just <laughs> want to say hi and connect and, you know, share a virtual hug and kiss, I'm a hugger. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can do that. You know, I we are energetically connected love is just universal is everywhere is who we are so virtually or in person we can be together and and share that joy and beauty that we have inside so i always say at the end of each episode to share after having that big conversation what is on your heart to share if you feel called if there's something landed on your heart that you feel called to share with the make life fun listeners like the floor is yours Thank you. Let's see. What's coming up is, you know, I recently wrote a blog post and the title is going to give it away. Stop striving to be your best self. 
just honor who you are today. Good enough. I, every morning I write a, a to be list. I strive to be that day, you know, this day, present in today and not worry about where I was yesterday, where I'm going tomorrow and just do me today. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that I don't have standards. It just means that I am rooted in reality. Today is the only day you come. Trust me, I've been close to dying many times and I, I don't want to regret one bit of it. Striving for something that I'm not yet there. Where you are right now is where you're supposed to be. Who you are today is who you're supposed to be. And that is beautiful. You are beautiful. And you guys just got the biggest treat. <laughs> so Aww. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are beautiful too. I love you. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts places you listen. We are also on YouTube. If you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman, you can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us and thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.